So you're wondering just what the f is big O notation? We're going to get into it in this video. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over big O notation and the reason why we're going over big no O notation is because last time you guys had voted and said, hey Kyle, we want, uh, you know, data structures and algorithms and all that goodness. Well, guess what? You kind of have to start at big O notation. So I'm going to go over the general idea and concept behind big O notation just so that when we're moving forward in the future in covering data structures and algorithms, I can refer back to what type of big O notation uh, this is going to be using and you guys can have a firm understanding of what exactly that means. Now, before we jump into that, you know I gotta do the little plug. I gotta say, make sure you head over to kiloloco.com. The site did get a little bit of a redesign, and if you guys want to join that membership and get a Slack invite, you can just hit this little join right here. It's gonna take you over to the all access membership where you can get all the courses that are gonna be available um, exclusively and get an invite to Slack. So make sure you check that out. With that out of the way, I also want to just mention that I am going to be going over who won the AR kit book, um, the Ray Wenderlich AR kit book at the end of this tutorial. So make sure you hang around so you can find out if you were one of those winners. All right. So let's go over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to hang around in the playgrounds. Now, remember, guys, that this is data structures and algorithms. This is the stuff that they teach you in school. So it's going to be a little bit boring. We're not going to be building apps, but when you understand these concepts, it's going to actually make you a better developer. So you got to be in this for the long call. You have to be willing to make yourself a better developer to really find value in this type of video. If there's any way that I can teach this, um, that you think would be better or more, you know, not so boring, then let me know and I'll make the adjustments, but let's go over what big O notation is. Now, first of all, I just want to talk about what it's used for. So big O notation is used for measuring complexity and complexity refers to essentially how your code essentially kind of scales. So there's two different pieces of uh, complexity. There's time complexity and there's space complexity. Now, if you guys are interested in exact differences or going over exact examples on each of those, then let me know in the comments that you guys want that covered. But the the you know the 10,000 foot view is time complexity refers to how fast your code runs space complexity refers to how much space or how many how much resources your code needs to run so um that's actually measured in big o notation so let's go over our first uh portion of big o notation which is constant time so as you can see i have this um this constant time this is the first uh step in big o notation where you have this o which i'm gonna assume stands for operation i'm gonna be honest i didn't look it up i don't know what the o actually stands for but i'm gonna assume that it stands for operation and what it's saying is that it's multiplied by one or some type of constant number and what constant time essentially means is that no matter how complex the code is or how much data that you have, it's always going to spit out the same number. It's always going to take that that constant time. It's always going to take the same amount of time to run this code. So there's constant. So if we were to go ahead and run this code right here, no matter how many uh, how many values that we have in here, it's always going to be constant. So um, what you'll actually see when we show this in a graph is you're going to see that it comes out with this line that's essentially straight. So regardless of how how many numbers are in this code, it's always going to take this amount of time to run this code uh, because it's just doing something as simple as, you know, setting a to one it's always going to be one no matter how many times you loop through this it's always going to be one so a starts at zero you're setting it in uh to one in this loop from one to 100 it's always going to be one so it's always going to take that same amount of time to execute this code because it's just doing that it's doing this one constant amount of code now obviously whatever you're going to be doing whenever you're referring to constant time is going to be more complex than this. I'm doing the most basic examples so that I can show you what these graphs look like and give you the general concepts. Um, I'll go into different, I'll go into separate videos covering each one of these uh, complexities or these big O notations just so that you can see like a real life example later in different videos. But 
for right now, just kind of focus on what these graphs are looking like. And as you can see, constant is always the same. Now, the next one that we want to do is going to be linear time. Now, linear time essentially scales up the amount based off of the amount of data that is added to the operation. So if there's 100, um, you know, if there's 100 cycles in this loop, as you can see right here, which one to 100, it's going to take you know, whatever that operation is times 100. If it's 1000, it's times 1000, 10,000 times 10,000, right? So essentially what it's doing is based off of how much data you have, that's how long it's going to scale. So this is, this is kind of like one of those things that you would, you would probably get a lot of in your code if you're just doing whatever works and what your, what your graph is going to end up looking like when we run this, is you're going to see that it's going to have this straight line linear linear like a line if you guys remember math in high school then remember linear like a line bam straight up so when it goes over when it goes up one it's going to go up one so on and so forth now this could be a different number maybe it's two so it's a little bit steeper or whatever but the the general idea is that with more data it's going to go up in a straight line like this so the more data means the the more essentially complex it becomes the more uh, time that it takes the more space that it takes essentially next what we have is a uh, quadratic time so as you can see quadratic time is showing you this o notation of o and then n to the second power so this caret is representing uh you know to the power of two so it'd be just like a little a little two right there um, but since you can't do that in Xcode, then this is what it looks like. But essentially it's N squared. So you can read quadratic time as being um, essentially you have to loop through all of these numbers, just like you did with linear, right? You have to go through all the ends, but you have to do some other complex operation on all those ends. So for each N, it's actually going to do some other operation with that N. So we're going through one through 100, right? And what's going to happen is not only are we going to use n once, but we're going to have to use it every time that n is actually in there. So every time we use n, we're going to have to use n again <laughs> for each of these loops. I hope that I hope that makes sense. But once again, I'm going to go over a video in each of these and show you in depth. But I just wanted to give you the 10,000 foot view and I want to show you the graph. So as you can see, quadratic time is essentially exponential because you're using exponents um, so n to 2 and you're going to see it's going to start off slow it's going to start off you know going up going up and going up and as more data comes in or more cycles are required by your algorithm what's going to happen is it's going to just continue going up so what you want to focus on with these graphs is the trajectory which is where it's where the the graph is going right so it starts off by going this direction but ends up going kind of up in this direction, which is kind of bad. So the higher it's going up like this and the trajectory that's going higher is essentially a bad thing because that means that it's either taking more time or more resources uh, with the more amount of data that you're putting into it. Now, it's similar to the linear complexity, right? Linear time. But at least, you know, depending on how much data you there is in there, at least it's going up in a straight amount. But with the quadratic time, since it's exponential, it's going to keep going up and up and up. And then eventually what will happen is you're going to start going almost straight up. So even with the more amount of time that you spend on it, it's going to take almost forever for it to even get anywhere. So this is the problem with quadratic time. It's um it's probably the worst thing that you could probably have in your code because it's exponential. And what will happen is with the more amount of data, it's just going to take even longer. All right. Next, we have logarithmic time and logarithmic time is probably one of the best ones that you want to aim for. And logarithmic time, as you can see, is it's going to use log. So the way that I'm going to explain this is this is going to logarithmic time or logarithmic complexity is going to be the log of n so based off of whatever n is which once again we're going n 1 to 100 and logs is almost like uh you could think of it like division um i'm not going to get into all the math behind it because i don't fully remember it um i know i could understand it but i don't fully remember it and you don't really need to 
um, no exact math to really get the concept, but essentially just think of it as the more that time goes by, you're doing a smarter operation in order to cut that time down. So the longer it goes, the, the more even out it will end up becoming. And you're actually going to see almost the, the inverse of quadratic time. So where you see quadratic time going up and up and up, and then eventually going straight up, which is a really bad thing. When we go ahead and run the logarithmic time, what we're going to see is that it's going to go up. It's going to start off going pretty high at first, but then as time and more data comes in, what's going to happen is it's going to finish off going almost straight in a horizontal direction, which it's ending off leaving in this direction, which is really good. So even though it has a high cost to start out, as time goes on, it's going to become more and more efficient. So logarithmic time is one of the things that you uh, want to aim for if you can't get constant time, because constant time is like the best thing that you can probably get because it's always guaranteed to be that amount of time. But logarithmic time is the next best thing because it's the next thing that actually gets you to that horizontal um, plane that you want to aim. And now the data is not showing perfectly right here. It's more rounded, if anything. It's more like this if you follow my cursor. But, um, you know, you get the idea. But essentially, as you can see, it's ending off going more hor horizontal than vertical. All right, and then the last one that we're going to cover is quasi-linear time. Now, quasi-linear time is not as bad as quadratic time where you know you have this exponential growth but it's not as good as linear time either where you have o to the n so quasi linear time as you can see is o n log n and what's happening in quasi linear time is that it's it it is going up in kind of a similar fashion to how uh constant time is going up like this or not constant linear time is going up it's still going up like this but since it's a multiplication of constant time and quadratic time which is like this uh not that one like this what you have is like something in in between so it's essentially the middle of quadratic time which is like the worst thing that you could get and linear time which is like the average thing that you could get so it's it's a little bit less than it's a little bit worse than uh, linear time, but better than quadratic time. And what you get when you have this graph is you'll actually see that you see how it's kind of going straight, but then it breaks up and then it goes like up a little bit. So it's not going straight how, how linear time was where linear time was just like straight diagonal. What it's doing is it's still going up. And as you can see, the angle is going to keep getting steeper and steeper, and it may eventually hit that vertical, but it's going to do that a lot farther down the road than um, quadratic time, where quadratic time, since it's exponential, it's gonna go up much faster. So quasi-linear time is uh, much better than, um, quad, uh, quasi-linear time is much better than quadratic time, um, but it is still something that's going to continue to increase in time complexity or space complexity, depending on whichever scenario that you're in. Now. Like I said, what you want to do is you just kind of want to focus on these graphs. Um, once again, constant time, one of the best things because it's always going to be that amount of uh, time or space needed. Um, you have linear time going straight up. The more, the more data, the more resources or the more time it's going to take. Quadratic time, what you can see is the more data and more recess that it takes, the less efficient the, the code actually becomes. Logarithmic time is essentially the next best thing for the most part, uh, where you will eventually start hitting that horizontal plateau. It's still gonna continue to go up, but at a much way slower rate than anything else and is very close to, not, not very close, but it's the next best thing to constant time. And then lastly, we have quasi linear time, which is kind of like a mix between linear time and quadratic time, but it's not as bad as quadratic time, just not as good as linear time. So just kind of remember these graphs. And what I want you to do is in the link in the description, I'll have uh, the project 
for this so that you can always go back and refer to this and see kind of what the graphs are like. Um, keep in mind that this is a Swift 5 code, but um, if you were to just copy this over to a Swift 4 playground or whatever you're running, you could see all this as well. Um, but that's just kind of the overview of, um, of big O notation. So constant time, O to one, linear time, O to N, uh, quadratic time, O to N squared, uh, logarithmic time, O log N, and then quasi linear time, which is O N times log N. And like I said, what I'll do is I'll create a video to go over each one of these and, um, go over them in depth. If there's anything that's still confusing um, or something that I, I missed, then let me know because this is all new stuff to me. I'm actually learning this stuff out of this book, which you can pick up. The link will be in the description if you want to get this book. Um, it's the Ray Wenderlich Algorithms and Data Structures book. Really great stuff. Um, but this was a core foundation that you guys needed to learn. So check that out. Um, and if you want this book to, to get a better explanation of this stuff, then then make sure you check out the link in the description. And you can pick up this book. Uh, the last thing I want to say is that there are other complexity or uh, other big O notations, but these are going to be the five most common that you're going to run into. Um, the other ones you most likely won't run into unless you work at Google or something like that. Um, in which case they probably already have all that stuff figured out and you could just kind of look at their code and then just figure out like, oh, I see why you did that right there. All right. So that's going to be all for the big O notation, guys. Thank you guys for watching. But before you guys go, I just wanted to go over who was the winner. I actually don't even know who the winner is. We have to go over to this website. It's called Comment Picker. I just Googled it. You know, you could actually check the Google results. Random Comment Generator YouTube. That's what I typed in. So I saw this one at the top. I clicked it. So now let's go ahead and find out who won. So let me go over and get that video link. All right. So this is the video. This is this unboxing changes everything. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paste it in and get YouTube comments and it's probably going to work. Uh, start raffle. Here we go and it's picking somebody and this is the winner m farouk so m farouk you won the um the ar kit book congratulations hope you wanted it um what you can do is you could just hit me up on email that's kyle at kilo and uh you can send me over your shipping address and what i'll do is i'll find out a way how to ship this to you now keep in mind this is the first time i've ever shipped anything uh from my place so it may take a little bit of trial and error but i'm gonna get you your book uh just make sure you reach out to me on the email and I'll get you that book. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your time. If there's any other, um, you know, topics that you want covered, make sure you let me know, uh, for the data structures and algorithms stuff. I'm going to do this every other week because it is kind of dry content. It's kind of boring, honestly. Um, but once we get to that place to where you guys have a strong foundation, we could get into the cool stuff, but it's going to take a while. So, I'm going to just switch it up with some cool stuff in between. So just be on the lookout for that. Anyways, thanks for coming by. Appreciate your time. Make sure you go out there. Keep coding passionately.